fine. Ooh, super simple. Whoa. Oh God, they were not kidding. How do they, what? In a webcam? I haven't seen this before. Wh where's the noise? I am shocked right now. Same lighting and everything, but so different. Oh, today I'm excited because I have the privilege to have been sent the YOLO Cam S3. And I've been meaning to show you guys this one for a while. It feels like companies have been really innovating when it comes to webcams lately. They're really, really trying to bridge that gap between DSLR and webcams. Because honestly, there's so many content creators and live streamers like myself that need a reliable camera to be on 24 seven if needed. Anyways, this is from, I'm gonna have to flip my camera, aren't I? So this is from a company called YOLO Live and they are specialized in making live streaming equipment, although be it more professional live streaming equipment for big events, big companies and video conferences and things like that. But they do dabble, like they do think about gaming and content creation in general. They're just not dedicated specifically for that. So this is definitely something they thought of when making this camera. Now there's a couple of pretty interesting claims for this camera, but I think the biggest draw for a company that you might not know of is going to be the price. It's like, is it worth it to buy if I can't flex a big gaming company name with it. Well, it currently retails at $199, which is really not bad for a 4K large sensor camera. But do keep in mind that it's 4K 30 FPS and 1080p 60 FPS. Now my videos are recorded at 1440p, so you will see either a upscale 1080p or a downscale 4K. So inside the main box, you will find two boxes. <laughs> One is heavier than the other. Inside that box, you will find two other boxes, <laughs> two other tiny boxes. One of them containing the screen mount. Oh, that's heavy. By the way, the whole thing is metal, so it's awesome. And the bottom part here is magnetic. It's pretty interesting. Uh, how can I demonstrate that? Is this magnetic? <laughs> yep, there you go. I just happen to have clippers. The second tiny box is the camera itself. Also feels pretty hefty for being full metal. And look at that. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Let's remove the little peel. Ooh, this is gonna be the thumbnail shot right there. So we have a little magnetic icon here. And in the back, we have that USB-C port. So yes, it's also a USB-C webcam. One thing to note is that uh, the magnetic icon is also at the bottom, so you can actually mount it uh, two different ways. So if you want it to be vertical, boom. If you want it to be horizontal, boom. And we can see how that works right now. So this is the mount and this would work like that. Ooh, <laughs> it just snaps in place. That's pretty nice. And let's say that I want to quickly move to vertical. I boom, boom, just like that. Super simple. Love that they take that into account, right? Also, even what it's like this, you can do little micro adjustments. That's fine. But of course, this whole thing, you know, it pivots. I believe this one goes up and down. There you go. So this also goes up and down. This is fun. <laughs> this is so much fun. So what's in the second box? Probably the cable. Indeed, we also have the quick start guide in there. And the cable is a USB-A to USB-C, but it comes with an adapter. As you can see, a pretty thick cable too, which is nice. Let me eyeball the length. I say 1.5 meters. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it is. <laughs> Here you have your USB-C adapter there, which probably makes it compatible with a bunch of other stuff. So in my hand, this is what it looks like. And let's quickly talk about the claims and then we can see the actual results. First of all, 4K 30, 1080p 60. That's for the resolution. The sensor is a one by 1.3 inches <laughs> sensor. So it's a CMOS sensor, probably familiar with those. Aperture seems to be 1.85, which means it will be capturing light pretty well. It has autofocus, so it is it is not fixed focus. It claims to be ultra fast autofocus. So we'll see about that. You can get uncompressed video. Granted, it's connected through USB 3. It doesn't overheat, which is what we expect from a webcam, but also full metal body with uh, no vent holes at all. 
Oh yeah, bottom of the screen mount is a quarter inch thread. So universal compatible with every tripod ever. And it supports HDR, but it doesn't stop there because they have their own software that comes with like DSLR like controls with some AI features that are meant to enhance the quality even more. Now, before I switch, I know it's inevitable for you to make a comparison with the quality right now. I just want you to know that this is a $800 camera. So four times the price of this, okay? so. Don't compare too much, but also compare a little bit. All right, so here we are. Just uh, plug and play, you already have access to the camera, but you can also download YOLO Live Compose, which is their software to really take full control of the camera. Right now, let's figure out how to make it landscape and not portrait. So right there on their graphic settings, boom. I'm already liking what I'm seeing right now. Uh, the light that is right there is actually the sunlight <laughs> going through my blinds right now. And uh, this is not bad. I have a lot of light, obviously, in my studio, blasting from all over the place. And it's handling it pretty well. I think it is auto exposure for now. So let's do this. This is one of the best auto exposures I've ever seen, actually. <laughs> this is this was great. But let me actually add this in my software so you can see the full thing first, and then we'll go back to the software. All right, there it is. Not bad. Honestly, not bad. So what you're seeing right now is the 1080p 60 FPS upscaled to 1440p. And uh, we can take a look at the 4K right now, if you can even tell the difference. Oh, actually, I, I can. There's a lot more details, but it's not as smooth as I would want it to be. I don't know if that's going to be appearing in the recording or if it's my PC lagging, but. It's not super smooth. It doesn't look super smooth, at least. But yeah, the handling of the light is actually really well, considering those lights are directly pointed at the camera. The autofocus seems to be. Working pretty well, actually. All right, let's test the autofocus. I want to show you this. What's the distance? Whoa, that is really close. Okay, there it is. That's actually pretty impressive. I'm gonna switch back to 1080p 60, just so, I don't know, just so it can look smoother. And let's play around with the settings. All right, so image setting, what do we have? Sharpness, sharpness is at 10 right now off the bat. We can put that down. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. We still get a fair amount of details, even when the sharpness is at minus 10. So I would say something like zero is fine. But yeah, 10 is a lot, but hey, maybe that's what you like, right? Contrast, we already have enough. Like the dark areas are very dark right now. So we're not going to touch any of that. Lens shading correction. So what is that? Again, they claim to have a lot of like AI features. What? Wait, it handles the color differently with what? This is more accurate. Focus, we have uh, continuous autofocus. And then here we have single autofocus. And then we have face. Face is pretty cool. I can, you can see all my pores. That's so weird. All right, let's keep it on continuous. They also claim that even when you do that digital zoom, you can still see a lot of detail. So let's figure that out. I don't know how they managed to accomplish that. Oh God, they were not kidding. This is weird. <laughs> this is so weird. They were not kidding. How do they... What? Is there a physical zoom? I don't know how they accomplish that, but uh, yeah. yeah, 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 they they were right. OK, AI parameter. I don't know what that is. So let's click start. This feature re requires login. Do you want to log in? Come on, man. OK, we logged in. Um, I didn't have to create an account, which is pretty cool. It just sent me a code to my email and that's it. Do you want to start AI parameter tuning is what it's saying right now. The feature requires uh, pulling the stream before use. Oh my God. <laughs> so we have to deactivate it from our recording software and then turn it on here. Start on AI parameters. Yes. Oh, there it is. Please try to keep this scene and people stationary after the host enters the frame. So we can adjust for the best result. Is this... 
Please select your preferred streaming image brightness. Oh, okay. I'm gonna select this one. Please select your preferred image style. I really like the purple in the middle. We'll select. And then it just sets it up for you. Okay, that's not bad. I think that's pretty cool. Again, the company claims to have a lot of AI features, including the way they balance the highlights and shadows that they will go into the shadows and try to pull more details and they'll go to the highlights and try to balance it. As we can see here, those lights are supposed to be really bloomy, but they're not. They're really clear and we can see, I don't know, this is this is pretty impressive. The exposure now is manual. It, prop, it basically set it to uh, manual, but we can go back to auto exposure. So if I do this, it should go a little dark or a little bright, I should say. And then if I do this, it's, I don't know, it doesn't fall for this trick. <laughs> it's so weird. I need something white to make, there you go. So you can see the, the exposure management is, it doesn't go like super bright or super dark unless you really push it, but look how fast it adjusts, including the focus. So in the best conditions, I would say that Yes, um, the autofocus works. <laughs> it, it's pretty fast, actually, but not always, not always. White balance, I can go manual and then really... <laughs> so yeah, around here is what I usually like, like that, cool. And you have all of the different offsets, including one in Chinese, which I'm guessing is the green offset. There you go. In a webcam, I haven't seen this before. This is like the most um, advanced white balance setting in a webcam ever. And you can also manually just click. So clicking and dragging doesn't work here, but you can manually just, this is nice. So if I want a little bit of purple, but not too much, I can bring that back. This is more like closer to real life. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right, let's go back to exposure real quick. I want to be a little, I want to bring it up and see how it handles the you know, HDR, like the dynamic range, like is anything gonna be overexposed? This is, this is pretty nice. I feel weird because there's so much details on my face now that I'm like, okay, maybe a little too clear. <laughs> and then there's audio setting. I'm guessing this has a mic. I do content creation, I do live streaming. We don't use a webcam mic, no matter how good it is, like we're not, I'm not even gonna touch that. And then there's auto lock for the exposure. So you can, if it seems to be at a good exposure and you want to lock it in, nice. Okay, what happens if I... Okay, we can see it getting a little brighter. So that's when you would want to probably lock it like the way it was before so it doesn't move. Or just keep it to manual exposure. It's going to be pretty low, but um, we can set our shutter to, to 1 over 80 and our ISO to 1000, but... Are you noticing anything? Where's the, where's the noise? Where's the grain? Where's the... Wh where's the noise? Okay, ISO 1200. Where's the... Come on, you gotta have some noise. Okay, uh, right there. A little... <laughs> I had to really push it to find the noise. This... Wow. For, for, for 200 bucks, wow, just wow. I am shocked right now. So the whole AI parameter thing is basically a preset, right? Like it's like, hey, let's, let's offer you a couple of presets based on what your image looks like so you don't have to worry too, too much. Uh, I still can't get over the zoom. It basically makes it sharper in order to keep all the details. You've never seen my skin up close like that. <laughs> and you can set up hotkeys for the zoom, for example. And as you can see, you can have uh, camera one, camera two, camera three, camera four at different zooms, basically. And just press the buttons when you want to do your little thing. And it works. This is nice. <laughs> this is nice. Yeah, that should be camera one. Field of view is pretty nice. Right now in the preview, I gotta say it's super smooth, like very, very smooth. So I'm hoping that it's um, when it's captured by OBS Studio that it feels the same. But damn, companies are not playing around anymore with with uh, with cameras. That's wild. I almost forgot. 
So they have this whole color grading app within their app that is supposed to be comparable to like DaVinci Resolve, right? So let's do the tutorial together. Color adjustment image, all right? Color palette, uh, just color in the palette, color correction record, and color contract. And finally, your reset button. So it captured an image. And what I can do, for example, let's say that if I click on the purple, I can select where I want it to be. So my purple will shift more towards a red or more towards a blue. You see that? Do you see the difference here? Now it's kind of red and now it's more kind of blue or purple-ish, right? And I can also adjust the brightness. I can make those specific colors like pretty dark or super bright, just like that. So you can really, really fine tune your color correction, right? If I pick the, the blue or let's pick a skin tone, I think that would be easier for you to to see, let's make me very yellow, or actually that looks pretty decent. <laughs> let's make me very red. There you go. Or very pink, hot pink. So if you want to create your own LUTs, basically, um, and you want to do it quickly, just pick the colors that you want to modify. But in my case, since I'm using bright LEDs, sometimes you might want to like tone it down a little bit. Maybe I want this color to be more purple. Right. Look at how the whole room now is more purple or I can make it more a little bit more blue. Oh, this is so nice. <laughs> I wish every software had that. And then there's the professional tab. And in this one, you have the whole spider web. So if you hover your mouse over certain colors, you'll see the equivalent on the left here. And here we can really play with like the hue, the saturation and the brightness. There you go. <laughs> and we can really mess things up too. Now, the scene tab is basically your preset manager. So here I clicked on it. So it brought me back to standard. If I wanted to, you know, reset up everything like I did. So manual exposure, let's go with this. Manual white balance, right? Let's say I want a very purple-ish scene. There you go. What I can do now is up top, I can save that as a scene. And I can call this one purple, for example, right? Confirm. And if I go to scene, now I can switch between standard. All right. And purple. You can run two different YouTube channels with this. <laughs> Look at that. Same lighting and everything, but so different. So different. All right. So final verdict on the Yolo Cam S3. I I like it a lot. I really like it and I'm very impressed. It seems to be delivering on pretty much every single uh, promise. I have to rewatch the footage uh, when I'm editing to see how smooth the whole 60 FPS is gonna be. But um, the AI thing is what I was worried about because you know every company put AI in everything and there's never anything. I've reviewed cameras before that claim to have AI this and AI that. I've never really seen it until today, honestly. I can really tell that there's some uh, processing happening in the in the background that we're not even seeing the whole thing with you know the 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 very low amount of noise i don't i don't think that's normal i, I feel like something's got to be happening and it's um pretty impressive the the fact that you can zoom without really really losing a lot of um resolution or quality also very impressive i've never seen that really and you know with the 1.85 aperture we get like decent bokeh and like the background is Look at that. So <laughs> I, I'm at the point where I'm going to start telling people, hey, don't bother buying like a mirrorless camera or a DSLR. Uh, some webcams can do it, <laughs> you know? I'm pretty sure you might be able to slap a lens filter on this and then call it a day. Oh, there's one thing I need to test is uh, how easy it is to flip it from horizontal to vertical. Just need to make sure I pick the right. OK, you need two hands. <laughs> it's that easy, I guess. It's really that easy. Boom. Boom. Wow. So yeah, if you want to buy one, link in the description. I um, This webcam was sent to me for free, for my honest opinion. Um, they did not watch this video before I post it. And I'm not making any affiliate money off of this. So yeah, what a time to be alive. <laughs>